Hey guys, Theo here from Capo Cafe. And today on this video, we are looking at something extremely gorgeous. We are pairing coffee and chocolate. So in the house, we have a guest and she is a chocolatier. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Um, I guess by means of introduction, I'm Stefani from Jackrabbit Chocolate Studio. We are so excited. <laughs> <laughs> Chocolate is actually grown uh, 20 degrees north and south of the equator. We're uh, all over the world, across the band, 20 degrees north and south. That's the only place that you can actually successfully grow cocoa, uh, cacao. Um, from the plant, once it gets harvested, there's a fermentation process that takes place, um, drying, and then it gets distributed internationally for roasting and uh, manufacturing and processing. So once we've reached that, then we start recognizing the product as something that we know as chocolate. And so, what do you call this fruit? This is a cocoa. cacao pod. 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 So now, if you can maybe explain to us, like this pod, um, when we cut it open, kind of, what's the process of taking it out, drying it, roasting it? Um, like maybe explain to some of the guys that won't know. Okay, so once you've cut the pod, you picked, the, harvested the pods, cut it open, you pull out what looks kind of like a long milli of lychees. Milli, <laughs> lychees, not like that. <laughs> I think that's basically like the easiest way to say. You <laughs> just pull it out of the pod, and then that will just get um, thrown into a large uh, crate, and then that will all get squashed together, and then that fermentation process starts. Uh, basically breaking down the like the fibrous outer layers, if I can say that. Yeah. And then from there to drying. Drying would also depend on the liquid content. Um, and then from there, the process is for each different type of chocolate that you would want, the taste and the notes, and the, the profiles would depend on how they get treated, how they get roasted, how long they get roasted. Um, once they're roasted and they're ready for conching, then the process basically starts where you separate and you press out your cocoa butter to the actual product of chocolate. So you have your base and from there we'll add milk solids and flavoring and more cocoa butter and sugar. And that, that wow. part of the process almost distinguishes where you're going to go. You're going to go dark milk, white, and then white will be split into different percentages of cocoa butter but also whether you'll be roasting them or not so how glad are you guys that you don't have to go through this whole process every time you feel like i think i need to go to pick up a chocolate <laughs> thank goodness there's people like them out there <laughs> who love making these chocolates so the whole idea for today's video is kind of to pair the chocolates and the coffee together so maybe while I get all the coffee ready for us to sip on, maybe explain a bit about what's inside the chocolate and what with the, the flavor and the chocolate bonds together that actually pairs with the chocolate, with yeah. the coffee. Okay. Um, so in the, the flavors that we have here today, specifically, uh, we've got a amarula and chili. So we create the ganache with cream, amarula, uh, chocolate, and then we infuse the cream with a chili. It's in a dark chocolate shell. Um, and the, together the flavors really like, it's all about balance. So you kind of have an extremely sweet chocolate with an extremely sweet filling. You need to balance it with tart or sour so that each of the, the elements within the chocolate complement each other. So the next chocolate we've got is an apricot cobbler. So this is an apricot compote with an apricot and jasmine ganache with a walnut crumple biscuit in a 32% blonde chocolate, which again is like the sour with the sweet. Gorgeous. And together they really complement one another to bring it like a really balanced chocolate. 
last one that we've got is a clem and gold filling so this is a creamy um, filling with the clem and gold putter free um, with the chocolate it's really smooth so you have that again like that sharp um, sweetness from clem and gold and then you have like the smooth chocolate finish it's pretty good well balanced chocolate yes. <laughs> exciting <laughs> Which one are we going to start with? Uh, I would probably say we could start with the Nicaragua. So it carries these beautiful characteristics of soft cocos with a bit of nuttiness around it. Um, but then it leaves this honey flavor in your mouth. And pairing that with the chocolate just creates that balance between, you know, the, the, the citrusy and that honeyness, which I don't know. For me, it's just a good combination of flavors. <laughs> but first off, we're going to break the crusts. Um, now, we can, as we break the crust, I want you to smell um, the, the aromas that come out of the coffee as soon as we break the crust. So you're just going to kind of push your crust away with your spoon. But as soon as you break it open, you want to smell the aromas that come out. Okay. So it's just a... So what kind of, um, what type of aromas did you pick up on um, breaking that crust open? I would say a light tobacco and a sweet, like a sweet soil. Sweetish soil. Sweetish soil. Beautiful. Any of that honey notes coming through there yet? No. <laughs> yeah, because it's, it's kind of more into the tongue where you taste it. Yeah. But I have had certain people that go, I actually smell the honey. So, Put that um, honey on the nose. <laughs> a bit of honey on the nose. <laughs> <laughs> so you can just rinse your spoon one shot there. And I would like for you to, to break the crust of the Ethiopian as well, because it is a very unique coffee to, um, to break. Yeah, go for it. To break the crust. You can see it's creating a beautiful crema as you start moving it. Mm -hmm. So you can go for it. This side I'm just picking up on, on normal strong nuts and the cocos. That soft, uh, very, very expensive type of uh, cigar coming through there as well, which is just nice on the palate. This one is like, I don't want to say, this one definitely smells sweeter. This one smells like more oozy. Very, but, it's a compost it's like, type of soil okay. though. Yeah. Yes, like, no, that, that's spot on. Okay, now, so to start with the actual pairing of it, um, the way that we would normally pair is we taste the coffees, then we taste the chocolates, and then we do the lovely thing of putting the two together. So. If you would be so kind to just cut us some small little pieces there. Um, so we've got the Ethiopian Sadamu, which is a, a light to medium roast. Then we've got the Nicaragua, which is basically a medium roast for that, that flavor. And then we're popping over to the Costa Rica for that slightly darker, medium to medium dark roast to create those beautiful flavor notes. Um, so we'll start off with the Sadamu. So we just, have you ever done cupping before <laughs> or as we like to call it slurping we slurping. are going to be catching her slurping today Let's see how, how expert level one <laughs> amateur slurping you still remember how to slurp right yeah because uh on the first one remember the first slurp always opens up the taste receptors only the second slurp actually gives us the flavors so nice and earthy almost slightly bitter to the center to back of the tongue like yeah. but now that second slurp is always the most gorgeous and the first one almost just that brings forth the flavor mm -hmm. it opens up the taste receptors really to and it's like what, what just happened and the second slurp goes oh what comfort so as you can taste obviously not very dark yeah, very medium very medium very tea like in texture yeah. very soft light of course, that bit of a sour to sweetish flavor that runs on the tip of the tongue um, that will be complemented with, of course, uh, the beautiful white and uh, 
apricotish type of elements. Now, if you focus on the center of your tongue, you'll actually pick up on some of the, the apricot. It's almost like a not ripe, so a greenish yeah. type of apricot when you bite into it. It's sweet, sour, bitter type of combination on the center, yeah. and also fairly dry. Yeah, dry fish. Correct. So then we just rinse our spoons, we go over to Nicaragua and um, enjoy a beautiful honey. So off the bat, yeah, much, much, sweeter. much better tasting in, in the sense of where it, where it goes towards um, on the first sip, but the, oh, the second sip just, it does something else to you. Double dipping my spoon in your cup. Okay, then moving over to the Costa Rica, which is more the type of coffee that every single palate in South Africa really wants because it's the closest to Mur coffee without being Mur coffee. Because Mur coffee classy is very, very better. <laughs> very classy Mur coffee. I mean, it has the almond and pecan nuts to the tip of the tongue, pushes a very strong cocoa to the center of the tongue, and a beautiful sour and bitter elements of a macadamia nut on the finish. Yeah, definitely the nut. I really like and, and love it. Now to get, a f of course, to the chocolates. <laughs> now I taste coffee every single day, but I don't get to taste chocolates every single day. So, um, so we're gonna start with the honey. We're gonna obviously start honey with, with the apricot. The apricot one, so that would be the sedan. Oh. Okay. So what what would be the main flavor to oh. to taste on this? Definitely one? apricot. The apricot yep. to the center, and what's the chocolate doing? Chocolate really just smooths it out at the end. <laughs> oh man, that's delicious. A crispy cookie. What's the nuttiness that I'm picking up on? There's walnut. <coughs> Is it walnut inside? Beautiful. Yep. Walnut in the biscuit. <laughs> that's really <Yeah>. tasty. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's tasty complete. <laughs> so then of course we take a sip and sip. It just becomes so light and mm. perfectly balanced. I think together they, they create a really complex mouthfeel. Yeah, yeah, like everything really works together. <clears throat> it lightens mm -hmm. the, the oh. So they together mm. they bring out the best in each other. Definitely. It 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 really shows that apricot with the walnut kind of pushing that bit of nut cocoa mm -hmm. and, and that chocolate, just nice, round, gorgeous, smooth, creamy mouthfeel. Mm -hmm. Then uh, jumping over to our beautiful and lovely uh, Nicaragua here on the side. And that is being paired with... Citrus. The citrus. So bringing back the orangey, lemony type of citrusy, mixing it together with that gorgeous honeyness and just that chocolate and cocoa coming together, so. That honey and citrusy thing happens happening to, from the side to the center of the tongue is just and that creaminess actually becomes so much sweeter. Yeah. It's like a very sweet creaminess on the on, you know in the mouthfeel, the the roundness, the body of the coffee. And then of course my favorite Fast. one, especially for all of the spicy people out there this is not chili that is going to burn your mouth this is just a finish of a smooth and beautiful chili so um yes i'm supposed to the chocolate first eh yeah you um, take that one i'll take this one okay yeah. so i'm gonna take a soft smooth Oh, that Amarula, oh, <laughs> a bit of a bite, bite of the cherry <laughs> in the back of the throat. <coughs> mm. 
That is a point of chilling. I've not, not even come to the coffee, <laughs> to the coffee yet. I'm like, Ooh, I can do this. Oh. But it's really got a dark, it really brings out a, a really dark. Like a really bold, <coughs> rich flavor. <laughs> yeah, once you get the chili. Once you get the chili. Once you get, once you get past the chili. <laughs> It's a really, it's a really rich, bold. I want to say dark, very heavy, very aggressive. Um, what I like about this one the most, mm, man, that mouthfeel in the back is just gorgeous. The thing I like, uh, love about this the most, yeah. especially on this specific pair, I think it's more the fact that m most of the South African culture appreciates uh, what we call stronger coffees. So this pushes that cocoa almost from 85 to 90 percent type of mouthfeel yeah. yet not bitter no but almost dry but very dry yet very creamy i think that the amarula mm. just brings that creaminess with it and then of course as you focus from the center to the back of your tongue that chain just pops in yeah. there and says hello how are you doing yeah <laughs> that to me yeah. is that's interesting that this one is your favorite, whereas mine is definitely the honey. No, the honey, well, it, it's different. And the, and the apricot it's, together, it's, it's just definitely amazing. different. Um, I think that the surprise of the chili the very first time I tasted this one was just, it was so big, I did not expect that. Yeah. And it was like, what? You can eat this every day? <laughs> so it is, it is definitely gorgeous. Well, Steph, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having me. Um, it's a lot of fun. Obviously, preparing for the Coffee and Chocolate Expo. If you guys do not know about it, go and Google it. It is definitely a show to go and check out because uh, it grows the coffee and the chocolate cultures. Just makes people more aware of where it should be going. And then, of course, Jackrabbit, you guys can check them out on social media. We'll link all of their things in the description down below. Obviously, you can see their hashtag you know down here as well and um yeah just thank you so much for for coming and educating us more on chocolate um it, it's something i will definitely enjoy for the rest of my life oh it's such a pleasure thank um you. yes so guys hope you guys enjoyed this please subscribe if you have not give us a thumbs up hit that little bell notification so you can see every single time we upload and we'll see you guys on the next video